Hi and welcome to a Data Garden. Thank you for checking out my video. In today's video, we're going to create a Jitter pod with some extensions using the ggplot2 package in R. And you can see it kind of as an introduction to ggplot2 in R. So if you're new to R, you have probably noticed that you can do a lot of things with the software, but creating plots is really not one of the major strengths of the R base packages. So many people resort to ggplot for making some more slightly fancier plots. So I have already started a new R, uh, R script here. And so let's get, uh, let's get right into it. If you do not have ggplot installed, you would have to do so using the install packages command and the package is called ggplot2. So let's do this really quickly. And it's loading and there we go, installed. So I'm quickly going to delete this so that we have a bit more overview. So next step we would obviously have to load the package using the library command. So uh, for the purpose of this illustration, I'm going to use the iris data set, which is already included in R. So you can use it using the data command and it's called iris. So if you're not familiar with it, I'm quickly going to have a view edit. Um, it's a data set with descriptive data of iris plants and it has these four numeric variables and one uh, factual variable which has the names of the plant species. So to have life a bit easier in a moment I'm quickly going to display the column names of the data set. So as you can see here are the five names. Now each plot in every G, uh, plot in ggplot starts basically with the same syntax. So you're going to start with the command ggplot, and you're going to specify the data uh, data frame that you want to use with the command data, and in our case it's called iris, as we have just seen. Now, as the next step, you have to map the aesthetics. What that means is basically you're going to provide the uh, ggplot syntax with what you want on the y-axis, what you want on the x-axis, and possibly what you want for the color uh, of, the, of the plot. And you do this with the command mapping, and you want to map the aesthetics. So, um, in this case, we want x to be, uh, let's say, c equal length. That's why I wrote the call names down below so that I can just type them without having to remember everything. And we want y to be uh, c equal width. Okay, so far so good. This is the base of our upcoming plots. So how you now, now if we run this, we can actually do that. But as you can see, you don't see anything. You have just have an empty, empty plot, which has an X axis and a Y axis, but there's nothing to see on it. So how we get to see something on the plot is we add another layer to it. And the nice thing about ggplot is that you can almost add an infinite amount of layers to it. And how you do this is you add to the command, you write a plus, and then you continue with the next layer. And how the actual graphics hearts are usually called is geoms. So let's type geom, and then we get like a very long list of possible plot types that we can use. 
Uh, so you can see, for example, we could do a line plot, histogram plot, a dot plot, and so on. But as I have said earlier, we want to do a jitter plot today. Now let's see when we run this, how it looks now. And as you can see, this already comes closer to what we had in mind. Now, to get a bit deeper into it, we are going to add a couple more features to it. So first, I find that the size of the dots is a little bit small. So let's change that up. And we are, of course, going to use the part of the geom jitter for it. And we are going to specify size to be, let's say, 2.5. Now you can also change, for example, the shape of the objects and a couple of different things with it. So uh, take your time to experiment with it. Now to have everything a little bit better organized, I think I'm going to move this to the second line. Now, one more thing that I would like to do is, as you know, we have these other two variables that we haven't used so far, and it would be nice to have some more information on at least one of them. And it's actually very easy to do that. And what we have to do is we have to specify another aesthetic mapping for the color. And it's going to be the petal lengths and now it is very nice that ggplot automatically rec uh, recognizes that the feature length has like uh, levels between one and something a bit above six and it automatically colors the plot in a gradient according to uh, according to this value now this looks quite nice and all, but I'm not quite happy with the blue colors, which are the default option. So I'm going to change that up a little bit as well. And how you do this is you add another layer to it. And this one is called scale color gradient, which is basically the same as we already have. As you can see, we have a gradient that is used to uh, to um, define the color of the dots, but we're going to have we're going to want to have custom values. So let's say in our case we want low to be red and high. Oh, oops, sorry. To be green. Et voila. And as you can see, uh, there's actually quite a correlation between the sepal length and the petal length. So uh, for plants with a low sepal length, the petal length is actually higher. Uh, no, it's, it's also lower, sorry. And uh, for plants with a high sepal length, uh, also the petal length is higher, which is probably what you would have expected. Now, I guess we have the basic plot standing, but the labels are still a bit annoying, like we still have these uh, dots in here. They also don't have a title. And I think the background is also a bit old schoolish. So let's see what we can do about it. First, let's look at the labels. So we have to add another layer with plus and the command for the labels is called labs, which is quite intuitive, I guess. And now we can define all the labels that we want to have. So let's start with the title. And we're going to call this iris. The second label that we want to define is for x. And we're going to call it sepo length. And we're going to do the same for y, which is uh, sepal width. And for color, which is petal length. 
And as you can see, we have just added a title and we have changed the labels to look a little bit more beautiful. Now, as the last thing for this tutorial, I want to get a little bit into the themes of ggplot. And as you can imagine, we add a theme with the plus and we're going to add a theme. So we type theme. And as you can see, there are a couple of different themes included in the ggplot base package, so to say. You can get additional themes with, for example, the gg themes package or also the gg force package. Now, for this uh, tutorial, we're going to use the light theme, but we're actually going to modify it a bit, little bit as well. So let's first see how it looks with the light theme. So as you can see, it's almost the same, except that we now have a white background, which I already find a little bit better. Now we can add more elements to that, and we're actually going to do that with another plus. And we're going to use command theme. And what I would like to do is I would like to remove these grid lines, because I think, like especially here, you see it looks a bit unfinished and I, I don't like how it looks. So let's define panel grid major, which are, oops, sorry, grid major, which are the deeper grid lines to be element blank. I think that is correct. Yeah. And the uh, panel grid minor to be also element blank. And finally, what I would want to add is oh, let's first actually look at how it looks now. And as you can see, we don't have grid lines anymore. So this plot already looks a lot cleaner. And it's a pretty simple command. Uh, major grid lines are blank element and minor grid lines are blank element. And I think you can make every plot a lot more modern using this. So the final thing that I would want to add is in this part, in the theme part, to change the title to center title because I think the title arrangement on the left, uh, the title position on the left doesn't quite look right. So uh, we do this with the plot um, title, oops, title, and that has to be an element text. And what we want is we want it to be horizontally adjusted, which we do with the hjust command. You will use that a lot in ggplot as well. And it can take values between 0 and 1, and we want to do 0 0.5, which means center. So 0 means left, 1 means right, and 0.5 means center. And there we go. So this plot already looks a lot better than what you can do with the base R function and was just a few lines of code. So there we have a pretty nice plot of the iris plants. We can of course export it with the save as image function. We can also use um, gg save and you can um, Find a uh, file name here, like uh, let's say iris.png, and it should save the image. Yes. So, if you enjoyed this video, I would be very happy if you gave it a like. If you have any follow up questions or topics that you would like to have discussed in a future video, then leave them down below in the comments. And make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel because I have more videos coming up very soon.
thanks and bye bye